Hey, this is Craig with Silent Pictures. Um, I was working on the closed captions for Blood on the Leaves and realized there's no real updated um, tutorials online anywhere, so I figured I would record one while I was working on it um, and hopefully update some of the info that's out there about this. So first things first, I have a uh, QuickTime file here created with uh, the trailer of Blood on the Leaves, so I'm just going to open up Premiere Pro. I am going to start a new project. Here I'm just going to name it something descriptive enough. Um, and then we're going to change the uh, location of the project to be the folder that I created on the desktop here for it. And, uh, go. all right, and everything else looks fine alright so okay and then here we are we're going to import uh, our video file which this uh, some of this will work if you're importing something with closed captions already in it um, but I'm showing you how to start closed captions from scratch here um, I'm just gonna you know put this in a folder just force a habit I guess and then I'll drag this down here start a sequence with the same exact uh, settings as the clip since the clip was already exported, it wasn't like right out of camera clip. All right, name that. And all right, the next step here is we're going to create, we're going down here to new item, and we're going to create a captions file. Um, you can change the width and height, uh, as well as the frames per second, whatever. OK. Uh, just You're probably just going to use 608 and CC1 there. All right. And I'll drag this down into the timeline like you would a title. Pop it down on top of there. Now, um, and actually, this comes up here right now because I have this turned on. Normally, this probably won't come up for you. If you go to the um, the add button, the button editor here, you can bring the little uh, dialog-looking thing down, and you can click on that to turn that off uh, and turn it back on. So you want that on, obviously, so you can see what you're doing. Uh, all right, so we're going to double click on our thing here, and that'll bring up the captions uh, window. Otherwise, you can just go to window and open up captions that way. Um, it already has a caption stored here, uh, and as you can see, you can type in here and change <laughs> the caption. And then you can add one using the little plus there. But as you can see here, once I do this, uh, It doesn't play. It's because this little thing down here, you have to drag this out every time you add a new caption, uh, which is kind of frustrating. I wish that would get fixed. But for now, there's a little workaround that I use. I add a caption. But yeah, so I'm going to delete that and start over with the woods wind blowing. So it's like the first caption there. So you want to have a first caption, and then you're going to add another caption. Uh, called the end or whatever it's just a placeholder and you're gonna go to the end of the timeline here and figure out what the time code is here which you can see with the blue numbers below your uh, program monitor so I'm gonna put that in 23314 uh, or 15 and then you're gonna drag it out and then there now you don't have to worry about have to drag that back out every time you need to use it. It'll just all be there for you. All right, so I'm going to change the time for the first one here to when actually that shot actually comes up. So it'll be empty, and it'll just pop on right there, uh, which it doesn't hold very long. So let's see when this goes till. All right, right about there. Now if you change the out point, the out point is always going to default to a second afterwards but you can change that obviously and then when you add a new one it'll start a frame after the one that uh, or actually the same frame that the last one ended on um, which in this case is pretty much the right time we're gonna move it one frame so it'll go in and pop up uh, let's actually just check here real quick so where do we want this to end 
when does the last gunshot happen? Okay, so pretty much it's still ringing out at that point, so might as well let it go till there. All right, so now you can see here that these pop up where you want them to, which the little bracket things is a lot of times how they show sound effects that are important. Uh, as opposed to dialogue where you just would type it right in. So if you open up your the uh, timeline there, you can see that there's a little visual representation of the captions, and it's really annoying that you can't drag those and make those longer uh, down there, but you can kind of see, um, you know, like the blue values you can either type in or you can drag them to make them the size that you need them to be. This looks pretty good. So I'm just going to show you here real quick. You can do all kinds of things here with you know, underlining it or, I don't know, change the color of the font uh, or the background of the font. You can make it transparent or semi-transparent. Uh, so there's a lot of options here to work with. Obviously, a lot of time you're just going to work with black background uh, and white text. That's kind of the default, and that's kind of where it usually goes. And then also you can change where exactly they're showing up on screen. So just in case maybe they're popping up in front of, uh, let's say, something important on the screen and you really don't want to cover that up, uh, or for whatever reason you need to put it somewhere else, you can change where they're located on that grid. And then... Also here in, yeah, see, these are different lines, which I centered it. <laughs> I didn't really center it very well, but you get the point there. You can center it. You can just like editing text anywhere in Premiere Pro. This is kind of cool. This allows you to uh, change how it pops up, which it's not going to do that with just one line. But so more text, other stuff. Here you go. And now, if you, yeah, see it kind of types in, which is what you see on TV a lot of the times, um, but it disappears right away afterwards. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that there. I'm just going to play around with these. I actually haven't, okay, so it defaults to four lines, even though I only have three lines there. And there's paint on, too, which kind of just does that. Uh, and then I'm going to default it all back to pop on because it's kind of, what I usually use, oh, wait. okay, you have to select the actual center of the track there, or the center of the caption thing, not just text. Okay, so I'm going to add the rest of these captions, because I actually am going to just do this for this trailer, and then uh, I'll fast forward and pick up at the end with how to export. Okay, so I have added all of the dialogue and voiceover and special sound effects and everything here. As you can see, there's a ton of stuff here, which, uh, you know, is a little tedious, but it's a lot easier than creating this in a text file, um, which is how I've done it before. Uh, just real quick before we export, we're going to want to get rid of that last uh, placeholder that we added there and make this the same length as our timeline. Uh, it doesn't really matter at the end of there, depending on what file type. So uh, I'm going to save the project and let's see. Yep, we're good. Okay. And then we're going to go to export media, just like you normally would. And in this circumstance, we're going to literally just export this exactly the same way you normally would, which I usually do H.264. We just let it stay there. Um, we're going to rename this, make sure it's in the right place when we export so we know where we're looking for it. Okay, save. And then here's the, the important part. You're going to go to, yeah, oh, actually here, I'll just make this really small so it exports really quickly because the video is not going to matter. Unless it does, then you can export the video side by side. You're going to create sidecar file. You can also burn it right into the video, but for this uh, tutorial, I'm going to create the sidecar. There's a couple different types of files here, which you'll need for different sorts of platforms, like the SRT is needed for VHX. Uh, SCC is like a readable text file that can be used for other things. I don't know why this frame rate doesn't allow me to go to 24 frames, but I haven't noticed that it's a problem, so we're just going to leave that alone right there. 
and then we just press export. I'll let's skip through this. Okay, and then it exports. Let's close out of Premiere here. Uh, and then right here where your file is, right beside the video that you just exported, should be your SCC file or SRT or whatever you decided to export as your sidecar. Like these files can be opened up with text edit. Uh, so you can kind of see what the values are that it's putting there. So this is kind of how you would normally do it if you're just going to edit it in text edit. You're going to put in your time code exactly by yourself. Um, and it's a little clunky to do it that way because you see here it actually stores values and stuff too. Um, each one of these file types are different. So if you wanted to create the files with text edit or something, you'd have to look up tutorials on how to do that. Um, but Premiere makes it really easy, which is awesome. Uh, and actually, I was about to upload this to VHX, but I just remembered that on VHX it is an SRT file, I think, that you need, which is not what I exported. Uh, but regardless, hopefully this was helpful. Um, like I said, I was searching through YouTube trying to look for tutorials, and the most recent one was Adobe like uh, CS5 or something like that, uh, which it's a little bit different now. Uh, hopefully that was useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask down in the comments. If you're interested in seeing more of that movie that I was just editing the trailer with, you can subscribe to Sideline Pictures. Uh, we're working on this movie and then later we'll be working on more, so you can check that out. Uh, otherwise, have a great day.